the, the, the community, the faculty of us saw Achebe as an eagle. And there was a, 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 a workshop with the title The Eagle on Iroko. 1990. Yes, I have forgotten the exact year. 1990s, yes. Um, soon after that, um, many papers were published. And uh, women, these feminist uh, uh, scholars, I read in one of their papers challenging uh, the, um, the organizers of that conference for calling Achebe the Eagle on the Hill. Achebe was against women in all his writings. That's the way they saw her. Uh, they saw him. The way they saw him was that he was against women. He never gave any prestigious uh, position to any woman. The women in Achebe's character, according to that, were uh, kind of, uh, if they were not uh, serving as slaves, they were serving as uh, just servants or made uh, housemates, even as housewives, I think they played down on them. That was it. Uh, that is another this And but um, one thing that happened, one thing I can tell you about, about Achebe's work is that it is very complex. It touches on all aspects of Igbo life. In fact, not only Igbo life. Universal uh, uh, activities, how people behave. He represented all kinds of men in his works. He represented slaves, he represented the nobles, he represented the mid middle uh, class, he represented the academics. He represented civil servants. Uh, th 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 these are the things. But it depends on what you are. Uh, and uh, the, the way you see him. Uh, Achebe, I, I, one man said Achebe is too much. Can we start with things for apart? <laughs> yes. I can't tell how many times I've read that work. Okay. What I like about that work was the picture it gives us of different images of masculinities in Africa, especially in Igbo land. Okuwa has a totally different masculine identity from the father Oloka. And these two were in conflict for much of their lives. You know. In gender studies, especially masculinity studies, we look at what we regard as the new men. These are more or less feminized men. Men that are not the macho men, you know, the traditional men, the very strong and powerful and domineering individuals. They are soft. They display a lot of feminine tendencies or traits. That's where Onoka fell. On the other hand is um, Okonkwo. The strong man, very determined. He always knew where he was going to and how to get there. That's another man. Okonko could not understand his father, Onoka. He never did. And that was why he was ashamed of having such a man. But I can relate with Onoka because Onoka tells me that all men are not caught in the Okonko's profile. So, those men that are not as macho as Okonko, they are still men. When we enter into issues about men, the way they present themselves, what they are, trying to understand masculinity, trying to understand men, Onoka presents a very perfect image. 
for us to deconstruct issues about men and their masculinities. So this is a very work I found very, very useful in my own work as a gender scholar and as a historian. Achebe's works include his novels, Things Fall Apart, 1958, No Longer at Ease, 1960, Arrow of God, 1964, A Man of the People, 1966, and Theos of a Savannah, 1987. His short stories include Marriage is a Private Affair, 1952, Dead Men's Path, 1953, The Sacrificial Egg and Other Stories, 1953, Civil Peace, 1971, Girls at War and Other Stories, including Vengeful Creditor, 1973, African Short Stories, Editor with C.L. Innes, 1985, Hineman Book of Contemporary African Short Stories, Editor with C.L. Innes, 1992, and then The Volta. His poetry includes Beware, Soul Brother and Other Poems, 1971, published in the U.S. as Christmas at Biafra and Other Poems, 1973. Don't Let Him Die, an anthology of memorial poems from Christopher Okibo, editor with Dubaim Okafo, 1978. Another Africa, 1998. Collected Poems, Karkanet Press, 2005. Refugee Mother and Child, and then The Vultures. His essays, criticism, nonfiction, and political commentary. There Was a Country, a personal history of Biafra, 2012 forthcoming. The novelist as teacher, 1965, also in hopes and impediments. An image of Africa, racism in Conrad's heart of darkness, 1975, also in hopes and impediments. Morning yet on creation day, 1975. The trouble with Nigeria, 1984, hopes and impediments, 1988. Home and exile, 2000. Education of a British protected child, 6th October 2009. The Igbo and their perception of God, human beings and creation, 2010, forthcoming. His children's books include Chicken and the River, 1966, How the Leopard Got His Claws with John Iraganachi, 1972, The Flute, 1975, and The Drum, 1978. Achaba is a recipient of over 30 honorary degrees from universities in England, Scotland, Canada, South Africa, Nigeria and the United States, including Dartmouth College, Harvard and Brown University. He has been awarded the Commonwealth Poetry Prize and Honorary Fellowship of the American Academy of Arts and Letters, 1982, a foreign honorary member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, 2002, the Nigerian National Order of Merit, Nigeria's highest honor for academic work. The Peace Prize of the German Book Trade. The Man Booker International Prize 2007. And the 2010 Dorothy and Lillian Gish Prize are two of the most recent accolades Achebe has received. He has twice refused the Nigerian Honor Commander of the Federal Republic in 2004 and 2011, stating, and I quote, I have watched particularly the chaos in my own state of Anambra, where a small clique of renegades openly boasting its connection in high places seems determined to turn my homeland into a bankrupt and lawless fiefdom. I am appalled by the brazenness of this clique and the silence, if not convinced, of the presidency. Achebe has been called the father of modern African writing, and many books and essays have been written about his work over the past 50 years. In 1992, he became the first living author to be represented in the Everyman's Library, collection published by Alfred A. Knopf. His sixth birthday was celebrated at the University of Nigeria by an international who's who in African literature. One observer noted, nothing like it had ever happened before in African literature anywhere on the continent. Many writers of succeeding generations view his work as having paved the way for their efforts. Hello, may we meet you? What's your name? Mwachuku Victoria. We're making a documentary on Chinua Achebe. I would like you 
to tell me something. Do you know Professor Chino Achebe? Ah, of course I know Chino Achebe. Yeah, I'm even surprised asking me such questions. Because everybody in this school knows about Chino Achebe. Not only in this school, worldwide. All right. Who knows about Chino Achebe. So, uh, which of his novels would you say made him part on your life? Well, things fall apart. Things fall apart. So, yeah. what about things fall apart that you like? 